Hi everyone and welcome back to HCGI. My name is Eugene Shmirov and it's time for a new ZBrush tutorial. This time around we'll be creating a quadrupedal monster, uh, particularly the one you see on your screens right now. And if uh, this thing gets not momentum, we'll be creating a series of tutorials uh, covering all the stages of character, um, uh, character model creation uh, from concept sketch, concept mesh, uh, for this matter, and throughout all the stages, such as uh, retopologizing, UV, and so on and so forth, up until the production ready model. So, without further ado, let's start creating our concept. So, here I just start with the usual Dynamesh sphere and started kind of thinking about what the character is going to look like his general shape uh, and his, you know, chest and head and, and uh, where the bones would be. And um, I looked at some pictures of lizards and frogs online before starting to do this. And I wanted this character to be uh, sort of uh, looking like a frog and a lizard at the same time and maybe a bit of dinosaurs thrown, thrown in there. Um, so um, the anatomy of uh, animals, I had to do some research uh, and it turns out that it's, it's pretty close to uh, what we have uh, in humans, uh, apart from some obvious differences such as like posture and animals use four, four limbs to move around. But the muscle structure and the bone structures are pretty close and the, the entire idea, I'd say the, um, like the logic behind it is pretty similar. They not necessarily have the same bones named the same or like uh, same muscles, but they f follow the same logic. So uh, even if you are inventing a character from scratch, even if you're trying to do something that is uh, not found anywhere on earth, uh, it's still a good idea to follow sort of rules set by nature itself, because otherwise your character might not make any sense to the end viewer, uh, which is the most important thing in the end. So here I'm using a clay builder brush to um, lay out uh, some muscle structures that I uh, think would be appropriate for this character. Um, I wanted him to have like massive arms um, and um, so s some of these uh, muscles are kind of similar to, uh, to what is found in humans because uh well the logic i was following is that if he can you you know basically if he moves an arm backwards there's got to be a muscle moving arm backwards you know if, if he moves it up or down there's got to be something to support that movement and same with legs the reason i use clay builder brush for this kind of uh, muscle layout is because uh it uh, after smoothing, it sort of leaves this fibery structure, which is really good uh, for muscles because, well, muscles consist of fiber-like, uh, well, they basically are fibers, so we want that to, to, to sort of be in our sculpt. Even if it's not going to be visible in the end result, this sort of layered approach usually uh, leads to a sculpt being, you know, being closer to life and having, like, more appealing look and more natural look. So here I'm trying to figure out feet um, and legs and uh, you know throwing in a tendon or two here and there and carving in and out basically searching for for a look that um, I'm happy with. Um, I didn't want this character to be too human-like so I uh, added this reverse knee that is found in you know a lot of mammals um, and at the same time this sort of helps to define um, a posture of a character and sort of like um, makes you think about how he moves around and um, maybe even what kind of environment he lives in uh, for his um, um, for his arms um, I sort of wanted them to be more human-like because I wanted this um, this idea that he may grab something with his arms, like he can climb around and he uses arms since they're really bulky. I wanted to, to sort of like convey the idea that he or she uses, well, this creature uses, uh, primarily uses arms to move around. And, you know, back legs are just there to support the, the movement. And I've deliberately, um, decided not to start with the head 
because um, usually I do that. I start with the head and then I lay out all the principles that I'll follow throughout the entire design. But this character, with this character, felt important that I sort of try and see um, the body as a whole because um, I, body as a whole first, and then then lay the head out, following the principles I, la uh, I lay out in body because. Um, well, this creature has an um, animalistic nature. It's it's less of a character, um, you know, as a as a sentient being, and more of a, sort of like a monster, or animal, a predator, something that might attack you. So um, I wanted to stress out body language a little bit more than just you know face, and because you know. Animals' faces are not as expressive as humans, and we, as humans, basically base everything around what we see. So anyway, um, here I'm just uh, you know trying to do some knuckles and uh, you know some pads on fingers, um, just adding sections to fingers here and there, and um, um, despite this hand being sort of human, sort of human-like. Um, I'm trying to maybe add some amphibiac features to it. Uh, later on we'll be adding scales to the character to sort of further push the whole amphibiac idea there. Yeah, but, but for now I'm just laying out tendons and bones underneath the skin. Here I um, move thumb around. Uh, move it to a different position because um, it felt a bit, little bit unnatural and basically the same process with feet just figuring it out I wanted this feet to to look like he only uses them to stand on and um, uh, in the contrary uh, to the arms which I wanted to look like he uses uh, to do a whole variety of actions with but you know this sort of like adding tendons here and there just like figuring out the shape um, kind of went with this claw like look for the feet um but sectioning them adding knuckles here and there and here uh, at last i started defining face and i wasn't really sure which direction to go so, so i um, thought about maybe this uh chameleon li lizard sort of look with this bulgy eyes um and um kind of worked so i decided to go with it and here i um at the same time uh start laying out the foundation for the wrinkles because this guy is going to be wrinkly as you might have seen in the preview picture um he's got a lot of foldy skin and so uh, at the at this point i'm laying out the written of those um wrinkles and folds and uh especially um you know, basically, when when doing wrinkles, it's a good idea to lay uh, to kind of work with layers, um, and um, first lay out the rhythmical foundation, and then um, decrease. You know, as you go a uh, higher subdivision levels, uh, decrease your brush size and start doing like carving in more fine wrinkles here and there. But it all starts with the foundation because if you just you know jump ahead and start doing wrinkles out of the blue. They will not look natural, and uh, also you know, wrinkles have a couple of uh, important features to them. They tend to form around the areas that have a lot of um, um, movement. So I mean, he moves his head a lot, so he has wrinkles there, uh, in his armpits, and uh, under his tail, and in his legs, and so on and so forth, and on, on his arms basically. So um, you gotta you gotta think about. Uh, what areas your character moves a lot, what areas of his body he moves a lot, <clears throat> and, excuse me, and um, uh, lay out finger, uh, lay out wrinkles there, and um, uh, at the same time, taking out that wrinkles uh, tend to form in circular patterns, so sometimes they would like different patterns of wrinkles would interpenetrate each other and create this web of uh, like little cracks here and there and that holds true especially that is important and that holds true for the saggy skin and this character is going to have a lot of 
that kind of elephant leg -like saggy skin in his chest later on and this is where I'll be adding a lot of, of that cracks um, to kind of you know convey the idea that uh, since the skin is so saggy that means it's kind of lost its flexibility and where it kind of loses it it becomes all cracked you know because it uh, loses some important chemical elements to kind of hold it together. Here I am just duplicating my mesh and reprojecting it uh, to have uh, several subdivision levels to go up and down and be able to lay out foundation of the wrinkles as I said before and more fine wrinkles uh, without uh, because it, you know obviously with that mesh you can't go you can't go back without destroying anything. Here I um, kind of start uh, laying out the mouth just to I've lost some of the details, but I guess that's okay. So I'm just kind of thinking about what it would be here and there. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 sort of uh, well. Obviously, eyes would have a lot of wrinkles uh, because uh, I kind of imagine he would move his like his eyes would be like in a lot of movement, in constant movement all the time. So I laid it. A lot of wrinkles there and basically I just like you know wrinkly eyes in my characters so here I just continue with the idea of, of uh, laying out the you know folds and foundation for the wrinkles as I said before I just use a standard brush because I find it one of the most uh, valuable tools for this kind of work and if you uh, I don't use this myself but you can go into brush menu and set gravity there and it will uh, create this additional saggy effect if you if you need it but it it's not necessarily it's just you know everybody chooses uh, the most convenient way to work I didn't use that but uh, be sure to check it out so here I'm just um, kind of trying to figure out maybe some patterns within his body that I'm going to use and um, uh, another uh, tool that I recommend a lot is uh, reversed uh, is using the uh, Damien standard brush uh, with uh, an alter alternative mode, to sort of like reverse carving, where it kind of pinches um, digital clay out instead of carving in there. And here I'm using Damien standard brush to lay out um, some finer wrinkles. I've stepped up a subdivision level or two. So on top of the foundation and written that we've laid out, I'm laying out the finer wrinkles here and there and note that I've um, uh, I've dropped out of the symmetry at this point uh, because uh, well it's convenient but at some point uh, you, you gotta do that because well nature is not symmetrical and you have to keep that in mind if you want your models to look natural uh, so here's just more Damien standard brush wrinkles here and there uh, a lot of the, those wrinkles that I lay out kind of end abruptly and um, I'm not worrying a bit too, uh, about it too much because later on we'll be adding a lot of textures to the skin like this uh, scale sort of like texture and um, we'll try to um, blend it all together but um, which brings us to the point of um, you may have noticed uh, that um, I um, zoom in and out a lot and you know my process might seem a bit chaotic but uh, when you're designing a character I highly recommend zooming out a lot because um, in order to create a coherent design all the elements within it have to work together and sometimes you just zoom in and start working on something and then you look at your uh, model as a whole and you realize that something that you've spent several hours on is not working anymore so um, be sure to do that. Um, so um, speaking, uh, those uh, cracks I've been speaking, uh, I've been talking, um, telling you about uh, a couple of minutes ago. I'm just adding them to the uh, saggy skin here, and that's just a standard uh, one of the standard ZBrush alphas found in the alpha palette, and I use the same uh, alpha here in the mouth to just break down the monotony a bit because I, I kinda thought about uh, if this guy was a predator he would be using his mouth to chew and catch his prey a lot so it would and since we had like this bony structure uh, it would 
probably be, you know, it would probably crack and break with time. And just wanted to sort of add this idea there. Here I'm just uh, back to wrinkles again. Just laying this out here under the tail. Uh, same process basically, a couple of subdivision levels down, lay out the foundation. You don't have to be really precise with it. Just, just uh, create a rhythm for yourself uh, to remember, you know, to figure out later on where all the finer wrinkles would go. You know, I talk a lot, a lot about wrinkles with this character because I sort of find it a big part of this character, of who this character is, is that he has this wrinkly structure to his body. So I'm just adding more of those things to back, back of his, uh, uh, back of his legs and uh, here to the arms and feet. Uh, basically, all the areas that would. Uh, be under a lot of motion. So knuckles, elbows, knees, all the areas that would have uh, a lot of compression and um, stretching at the same time, uh, they kind of tend to develop uh, this cracked skin pattern on them. And um, here I'm, I'm using snake hook brush to sort of create some fangs. I didn't think that through and then I realized that this character would probably need some fangs so I uh, use snake hook brush. Everybody's uh, most hated brush. Um, yeah, it came in handy here. Here I lay out the bigger scales with the mask uh, with one of the standard ZBrush alphas. So just uh, lay out the mask and then I invert it and hide the mask and then with move brush I just pull those things out of the of the body and smooth them back in. Um, so later on I'll be blending this with the rest of the skin texture but I wanted to sort of have this um, bigger pattern of scales on his back uh, because you know having scales too uniformly would be too boring I guess. So here I'm adding uh, yet again more wrinkles um, because uh, I kind of thought this uh, his hands and uh, legs uh, looked a bit too human so um, uh, I, I was inspired by um, this gigantic lizards called Kom Komodo dragons uh, they sort of look like a uh, like a smaller lizard in a uh, big lizard suit so they're uh, they their their feet they have like a lot of falls as if as if it's there is nothing inside, so I kind of wanted this sort of um, sort of uh, this kind of feeling to this character. This un a little bit unnatural um, folds on his arms, and uh, these particular folds uh, they may look a bit you know lazy here, but don't worry about this. Later on, uh, we'll cover this up with this, some um, uh, more elaborate skin texturing. So basically it's just uh, yet again a foundation. And um, same thing basically here on the legs. I wanted this to be more like this um, sort of like jumpsuit kind of feeling to it, you know. Yeah, go online, check out Komodo Dragons. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So here I start laying out the first um, first layer of the skin texture, uh, very fine, uh, almost invisible, um, we'll cover it up with a different texture later, but I sort of like to have several layers when I'm uh, adding skin details, so I start with this just like fine layer with the big brush in dynamic mode. Uh, dynamic mode allows you to, uh, it will help you maintain the brush size as you zoom in and out. And this alpha I'm using is found in Lightbox. It's one of the stock uh, ZBrush alphas found it within Lightbox. Um, but then um, I'll be using a couple of alphas that I've downloaded from Pixelogic so, um, Download Center, uh, like this one here. Um, uh, you can go uh, Google Pixelogic Download Center if you don't know what I'm talking about. And it's basically an official ZBrush alpha library. Uh, where you can download alphas for free. So here I'm starting with the second layer of the of the skin scales. Uh, this is uh, yet another alpha that I have downloaded from Pixelogic. 
um, um, alpha library. Uh, but the, the main idea is just like it's it's a scaly pattern, but uh, I use it just as the same layer, but this one is bigger. Uh, I'm in dynamic mode as well. Uh, but it's sort of like more pronounced and more visible. So I just lay it out following the uh, general rhythm of um, all the elements that I'm covering it with. I'm just covering the entire model with the with those scales, They're just small scales basically. Uh, and if you go inside Lightbox uh, within Brush uh, library there, uh, in stock light, Lightbox library, you'll see that they have scale brushes there and even lizard scale um, brush, uh, but I ended up not using it. I just, I'll, I'll use it for a couple of areas here and there to tie things together. But I found it not too useful when doing this kind of character because that lizard scale brush um, works great with the wrinkly areas where there's like a lot of directionality because uh, that brush responds to directionality, uh, you know, way too strongly. So when you start covering some areas uh, such as um, his back or his trapezius muscles, uh, you kind of start seeing those brush strokes, they kind of are visible and this looks unnatural, so I decided not to use that brush. But I encourage you to go ahead and check it out and try experimenting with it, maybe you'll find it uh, useful. So um, while doing all the scales, I, I, I destroyed some of the uh, wrinkles that I've laid out previously, so I had to go back and uh, re-sculpt some of that. So here I'm um, basically using uh, scales, um, lizard scales brush that I've just talked about to sort of just tie in um, different areas together where where I want slightly different uh, scale pattern here and there, such as back of the palms or where big scales on, on the uh, back meet the rest of uh, the smaller scales. So here I've started transposing the character. I'm using Transpose Master for that. If, if you're not familiar with it, it's found in the uh, Zip Plugin menu. What it does, it diffuses your, uh, all your subtools together and creates a merged uh, low polygon version of all your subtools, which you can transpose at the same time, all, all subtools at the same time. And then when you click uh, uh, T-Pose Sub T in uh, Transpose Master menu, it will reproject all the changes that you've done to your subtools in your original model, which is pretty convenient. Uh, and I'm just trying to give it a more dynamic pose, um, sort of like his um, his startled or his looking for something or he's climbing over some rocks or you know just just uh, just thinking about how I could make him more dynamic. Nothing too fancy, but basically giving him the pose that you've seen in the preview picture here. Uh, just um, uh, transposing is uh, basically something that is done for presentational purposes. So I'm just like I'm here. I'm just trying to move legs apart, uh, make this more dynamic, and at the same time flatten um, flatten them in relation to the ground to make it appear as if he's just like standing on it and well basically we're almost there it's just uh, I want to bend the head a bit here maybe he's looking at the camera or he's like sniffing something um, a lot of times retopologizing within brush would require re-sculpting and as you can see I'm just doing a tiny little bit of re-sculpting here and there but, well, basically, we're there. So this is what we have in the end. As usual, I went ahead and I rendered my model in um, KeyShot for presentational purposes, with just like a bit of more dramatic lighting. Um, if you want to see where this guy uh, goes further uh, in terms of, uh, you know, retopologizing, UVing, and so on at the forest, and if you want to see how the production ready model is done based on this uh, concept uh, mesh. And don't forget to share and like um, and subscribe to the channel. I hope you found this video informative and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.